Hello, everyone, and welcome to RFID Made Easy, one platform for HF and UHF RAIN applications. I'm Mike Rabina, Executive Vice President of FIG Electronics and moderator of today's session. I'm speaking to you from FIG's U.S. offices in Duluth, Georgia. As I look across the registration list, in addition to North America and South America, I see there's individuals from Europe and Asia, and I want to take some time to thank you for giving up your personal time, your evening hours and morning hours to participate here. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available for future reference, so please relax from the note taking. We'll share a link with you shortly after the session is completed. Uh, naturally, because of the size of the audience, everyone is, of course, muted and cannot be heard. So please take a moment right now to familiarize yourself with the GoToWebinar control panel. Here you can post questions to the panelists. We'll collect them up and answer as many as possible in the time that we have available. I just need to... Kristen, I'm having trouble advancing the slide. Could you do that for me? There we go. Oh, thank you. Uh, our presenters today are Mr. Brad Horn, the CEO and co-founder of Portable Technology Solutions. Mr. Howie Heckman, the lead developer of Portable Technology Solutions Clearstream RFID software. And Mr. Klaus Schoke, Vice President of Technical Sales and Support for FIG Electronics. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining and welcome to the program. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Uh, still having a little trouble advancing myself. Okay. RFID is a myriad of technologies uh, with many interrelated aspects and used in a wide variety of real-time applications. So I ask you to consider this. RFID is an identification technology. Please advance. It's a wireless technology. And it's a data technology. Uh, and very much is a core technology lying at the heart of certain information and control systems. Please advance. Every technology has an underlying level of complexity. You know, from the telephone in your hand to the screen you're viewing to the driverless car of the future, each of those are examples of extraordinarily complex systems. It's the role of hardware manufacturers and software providers to make technology easy to use and to place technology's complexity so far in the background as to bring about a level of intuitive use. Now, RFID has yet to mature to that point, but it's marching toward that objective, and it's the purpose of this seminar to simplify its implementation. So let's please advance and review our agenda. We'd like to give you an introduction to FIG and Clearstream RFID. Uh, we want to describe one data collection tool for all frequencies. Uh, we want to uh, feature those RFID frequencies and uh, describe a little bit about their operation. We'll give you a live demo comparing HF and UHF technologies, uh, a step-by-step -step of Clearstream, uh, and software with FIG readers. And afterward, we'll uh, total up these uh, questions and provide as many answers as we can. So let's uh, advance and talk a little bit about FIG Electronics. We're a privately held company. Uh, we're based in Weilburg, Germany. The company celebrated its 50th anniversary just this past year. We're a mid-sized company of about 300 employees, and we're growing. 50 of those people are in our R&D and development department. We're the only reader manufacturer uh, and antenna provider offering a full line of LF, HF, and UHF products. And we are also very well diversified. We don't derive our uh, business just from RFID. We have four operating divisions uh, that include sensors, controllers, identification, and payment. Next slide, please. FIG Electronics 
passionately believes that it's the data streams created by passive RFID technology that is truly transformative to business. Our largest clients are original equipment manufacturers, system integrators, and value-added resellers that share in that belief. We help to monetize the great opportunity in software and services unlike any other manufacturer. Um, our belief drives the hardware and firmware development of five reader and antenna platforms manufactured to address each ISO standard frequency and protocol defined for passive RFID, from small embedded modules to sophisticated long range readers supporting large antenna arrays. Next slide, please. We're an engineering driven company with an enthusiastic team of designers that are equally passionate about the products that they develop. Last year, the company produced well over 200,000 RFID readers, and since inception have more than a million readers been deployed throughout the world. The products are built on such a high level of quality and reliability and durability that we're the only one to offer a limited lifetime warranty on our products sold in the United States, the only manufacturer to do so. So having the right tool for the job certainly makes things easier. My father always said that. Uh, with more than 100 different reader products, FIG represents a toolbox to select the most appropriate device to perform an RFID application. But you know what? RFID is not a solution. Software is. So having the right RFID tool available is just one part of making RFID easy. Taking advantage of those data streams, well, that requires software to collect, to filter, to manage, to provide an application layer that performs those vital functions that ultimately provide the solution. And that brings us here to uh, portable technology solutions. So Brad, I'd like to start with you. If you could give us a bit of a background about portable technology solution and the Clearstream software that you developed. Sure, Mike, thanks. And uh, great uh, intro to FIG for the, uh, the PTS customers that are not familiar with FIG, which is a, a great partner of PTS over the last year. Anyway, uh, if sometimes it's easier to just tell a little bit of story of why we're into RFID, especially fixed RFID, so it makes a little more sense of where our market focus is. And for those FIG users who are on the webinar, just a little bit of history so you understand what PTS is fully about. Um, the company itself was founded in 2000 on Long Island, New York, or in Long Island, I don't know the proper way to say that still, as a mobile data collection software. Um, myself and my other co-founder worked in various companies, and uh, one was a, uh, a traditional AIDC a custom software programmer. And one day we saw a device sitting uh, by his desk. It was an early, uh, Palm OS barcode terminal made by a company many are familiar with, Symbol Technologies, um, no longer in existence and now under a different name. Anyway, um, we saw this and we saw an opportunity. We, we saw the uh, need to transform paper forms into mobile data collection forms. Unfortunately, our first step was uh, the wrong step and we went out and developed a very high-end uh, tool to duplicate, replicate mobile forms and get them to a back-end database. And in the process, we learned we weren't salespeople and uh, we were more tech technical guys. And we also learned that there was a market need. No one wanted this $300,000 system we developed. They were buying these devices, um, which at the time were groundbreaking. If you remember Palm Pilots, uh, you know, the first real PDA that uh, entered the market and took it over. And uh, people were buying them with the barcode scanners embedded and they just wanted to do something. And we, we had this big system, but all we heard from our customers was, yeah, I don't need that. I, must, I just need to do this. And that was the theme from our customers. And it's the theme we still live by today. I just need to do this. This is my problem. I must just need to do this. So what we did was uh, we really retrenched and we developed this piece of software called Tracer. And we sold it for $23 as shareware. And believe it or not, it was successful. Um, we were selling licenses for the first time in our existence in 2001. And though we weren't driving Mercedes and we weren't VC'd and we weren't um, getting rich, to be quite honest, we had a lot of happy customers. Some really big customers came to PTS and said, this is great. But now, not only do I just need to do this, I need to do this too. So 
So we started adding in features. It was focused around barcode scanning, but we started adding other things such as photo uh, capture, uh, lookups, database controls. But we still could start off as a simple tool, but it had the features so it could advance. And this tool evolved into Tracer Plus. And of course, as the customers always do, they came back to us and said, this is great. Um, we can get the files out as an ASCII file. And uh, for those uh, techie guys out there, uh, it's, not, it's a great acronym to use. And no one as an end user will understand it. But people really wanted to get their data into their own systems. So we created something called Tracer Plus Connect, which is really the core of what we do today. Um, it allows you to take data from the edge on a mobile handheld and get it into any pre-existing database that you may have via a ODBC connection or an API. Anyway, it, the great things about Tracer Plus, anyone can use it. It doesn't require a programmer. You can be uh, an entry level guy who can read a manual and you can try Tracer Plus. It's free to try, it's affordable, and you don't have to throw away the system you have already. If you have a great management system or an Oracle database, an SAP system, you can take Tracer Plus and put it on the edge of the system and collect the data you want the way you want. So how did we get into RFID? Around 2008, we're in existence eight years, Zebra or Symbol at the time has a mobile RFID handheld out there. And we discover people are using our software for mobile RFID, but it was the wrong way. They weren't taking advantage of the features of RFID. And as always they do, the customers came to us and said, this is all well and good, but I have to scan an entire room of assets. You know, tracking to the one-to-ones for those durable goods that can't really handle a barcode, the RFID one-to-one -one technology is great. And we were like, what, you're, you're using RFID with what we ha have, really? Because again, we're shareware, so a lot of times people use our software, get it set up, and we don't even know what they're doing. So we made a, a, a great decision, one of the best decisions the company has ever made. We made an investment in RFID, and we did it the right way. And we put in multi-scan, so you could scan thousands of items in a minute. We put in a Geiger feature, so you can find lost items with an RFID, we could write the tags, and then recently we even put in multi-read Geiger, so you can basically do an Easter egg hunt. Load up 100 Easter eggs or lost items and go out and find them. And today we have 10,000 plus mobile RFID users in the field using our technology, which again can be used as just a simple barcode application or a simple RFID application, or you can set it up to run your whole company. It's a very powerful, simple tool. And when other solutions are thousands of dollars and require programming maybe, and your only two options are change your process to buy something off the shelf or get a custom programmer. It's a great fit for those who have unique needs and they have processes that set their company apart. And everybody who's in a company knows those processes, those core processes that you follow are what set the company apart and give it its value. You can't go change those and make them meet some off the shelf software need or give them to a custom programmer so he can kind of uh, interpret what you're trying to say, and then you get a system that may not do exactly what you want. We really tried to give the development of the tool, of the software, to the end user. You use your own databases, and you don't have to change your processes. So anyway, people are out there now, thousands of them, going out with mobile handhelds and syncing the data they want to sync into the databases they need to get it to. We didn't put it up in here, but we also even sync to Excel. And you can present the data on multi-threads. You can do all these great things. So again, we're going to the market. We're selling RFID. Everybody we think is happy. And all of a sudden, we hear from our customers again. And what do they say? Hey, this RFID stuff is great, but I don't want a user on the other end. I've seen this fixed RFID out there. And they have these passive readers that sit there and read these UHF tags. Why do I need it? I have these volume, these low volume of locations. I have a gate somewhere. I have, you know, somewhere where it's a check-in, check-out in a uh, tool room, and maybe someone checks things out two times a day. I can't put a full-time person there scanning this, the uh, the uh, tag. Or maybe that's, you know, it's not their job, and they're not going to even think to do it. You know, I'll put the, the scanner there, but they won't pick it up and use it. And maybe it's just not possible. Maybe I have an equipment like I'm a railroad somewhere and I have a cabinet of equipment and it's critical to know what's in that cabinet. But I can't send the guy out 20 miles onto the railroad line to find out what's in there or what we think is in there and then send him back to pick it up. 
you know, here's some of the examples, a simple gate. Maybe it's the back gate and you don't need a guard there. Here's those railroad booths. Um, and again, here's a, a big facility with carts that are moving around the, uh, the facility. And you can't have a guy sitting there chasing the carts with an RFID gun typing in where they are. Um, it's just not going to work. So what did we do? We went back to the drawing board. We talked to our, our partners first, and we tried to engage them and say, hey, what's out there? And what we quickly learned is we were losing deals for mobile RFID because there wasn't the proper fixed RFID solution out there. There was nothing like Tracer Plus for fixed RFID readers. There was nothing that was free to try so someone could prove out a concept before they got started. So anyway, we went and we developed ClearStream. It's simple to get started. It's free to try. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It supports everything out there, all the UHF RFID readers. You can latch it onto your current DB so you don't have to throw out what you have. You can demo it for free. You can go right onto our website and download it and start playing with RFID today. Uh, you can start out simple and maybe just scan things in as they go into a room or scan a room of items or a cabinet. Or you can get pretty advanced, creating multi-connected uh, you know, connected different processes to send emails or send alerts. You can control lights and buzzers. You can scale to run hundreds or even thousands of readers. We have a web API that allows you to put a little module on your phone, then you can turn on and off of readers. So if you're that guy in the field and you want to know what's in the, in the cabinet out there uh, 20 miles out in the line, you can press a button and start that reader in that cabinet and see what's there. And it's evolved. As always, uh, Tracer Plus is on version 10. We're on 4.1 after it was released in 2012. So we're, uh, we're making an investment, a big investment. And we have customers in every corner of the globe. We have partners uh, like RFID Canada and Canada that are out there selling our software aggressively and see the value in it. And it's being used for anything you can think of that can have an RFID track, asset tracking, people tracking, uh, medicine tracking, inventory tracking, your standard WIP tracking, um, and a lot of different things that you couldn't even imagine. Weapons, um, livestock, and it's being tracked all different ways. We've heard of customers using it to track chickens at chicken feed stops and how it relates with the chicken growth. It's, it's amazing what our customers think of when they're given the tools to create what they need to create. But, you know, we've been successful with it. We have customers, and here's just some of them. We're not going to uh, brag. We have a lot more to go. We have small market penetration compared to what's out there. But some of the big names have found us and are deploying us in many different places. Companies like Citigroup, Syngenta, uh, Emerson Electric, Samsung, they're using our software. And some are in early stages and some have it fully deployed, but all see the value in being able to control their own destiny with the software. But what happens? Traditionally, as it always does, customers come back. Those that are manufacturers or developers in there know that the customers come back and they want more. Um, they wanted to scan things that really weren't set up for UHF scanning. Maybe it was tightly packed items. Maybe it was uh, items that were like a badge that someone was carrying that may be on the other side of their body. Um, you know, Howie's going to go through some of these scenarios, and I'm sure Klaus is as well. But what our customers told us was, if you want to get into LF and HF and even UHF reading, which we were in already, you have to look, talk, talk to FIAC. They're the only guys we know that have one API that allow you, and this is a development company, and we're very cost conscious. Uh, we're not public, so we don't have boatloads of money. And uh, to you know, chase pro skunk work projects, we have to do things that are effective and successful. Um, and FIG allowed us to do this with LF and HF. We only had to develop for one API and we could pick up all three technologies. And they have a host of different RFID readers, on the, even on the UHF side, that are different, maybe more powerful, less powerful, smaller footprint that allow you to do different things with UHF that maybe some of the other manufacturers don't have. Still, it allows us to take these technologies for our customers, integrate them with ClearStream, be a simple drop of a drop down menu and take advantage of these new technologies and push it to the databases that they're using already. There's no programming as always, and there's a minimal investment to get started. And finally, you as the customer, you control your own destiny. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Howie right now. He's going to show you how ClearStream works with FIG 
And I'm going to encourage you to stick around for Klaus. We've been doing this uh, quite a while. And uh, I actually caught one of Klaus's presentations, I think it was around six months ago. It was a webinar. And uh, I don't know, he didn't think it was anything special, but the tidbits of information uh, Klaus gave during this webinar were eye-opening to us who have been in it this long. You know, it's, uh, it's a unique technology. Um, it isn't simple on the, the side of actually the UHF technology and the frequencies and how they read things and the sensitivity and how the tags are manufactured. What PTS is trying to do is make it simple for you to take advantage of it. And uh, I really encourage you to uh, listen to Klaus because when you deploy the technology, some of the things he's going to give away, these little tidbits, they're going to, you're, you're going to come back to him in a, in a few months and say, wow, I remember when Klaus said that. Now it makes sense. So anyway, with that said, Howie, it's all yours. Okay, great. Thanks, Brad. Uh, thanks for kind of kicking this off and sending it over to me. Today, I thought I'd uh, jump in and uh, show everybody kind of a live demo of uh, RFID technology utilizing the different FIG readers. Um, one thing that we've come to learn in doing RFID for so long is that uh, the different frequencies and the different technologies available for RFID fit different purposes. And Klaus is going to go into this in uh, more detail. but uh, there's different scenarios where you want to use the correct technology for reading those tags. Um, you know, tags can be stacked uh, very closely together, which can give certain difficulties to, say, a UHF reader from reading all of the tags uh, immediately. So I have a, an HF demo here of document tracking. So kind of like the picture you see in the slideshow, uh, there's a stack of documents that you'd like to track. If you were to use this in kind of a UHF environment, you may find yourself not picking up all of the tags within that uh, that kind of packed environment. So you might try to have to move the, the uh, folders around to scan all of those tags. And to tell some, a worker to do that, um, it may, you may miss tags. You may uh, not get all of the tags all the time. So you'd want to apply an HF type reader for that situation. Uh, on the other side for UHF, for UHF you get longer read ranges. <clears throat> you can also get these tags in motion and apply logic to the movement of items. So for the two demos today, I'm going to show you the differences between the technology uh, I have a pre-configured application here uh, that I'm kind of just going to open up and show you. And then what I thought I'd do is actually go ahead and configure uh, a fixed reader into a pre-built database. This should show you how quickly you can really take a FIG reader and hook it up to a database and start scanning tags. So you can see the performance of scanning tags. Uh, you can do it with both HF, UHF, and see the differences between the two different technologies. But the setup is the same. You're just really configuring these readers into your database, and you can leverage the technology for, uh, for fixed RFID into maybe a pre-existing system you already have, uh, or even just creating a new system from scratch and leveraging the technology into that. So with that, I'm going to jump out of the PowerPoint here, and I'll actually jump over to Clearstream RFID and kind of talk you through this. Now, I don't have uh, a webcam set up to show you what I'm doing. But just to give you kind of a description of how this is set up, I have two FIG readers set up here. I have a FIG MR102HF reader, uh, and I have a FIG MRU102UHF uh, uh, reader with two antennas configured to it. Um, so for the UHF reader, I'm going to show you a check-in, check-out type scenario where it's actually scanning on both antennas and recording the movement of the asset as it's going past the antennas. And for the other, I'm doing that document tracking uh, application where I'm taking a stack of documents and I'm just putting it down on the desk. In this case, it's going to be the front desk uh, medical records uh, and capturing all of those the uh, HF tags immediately. Um, so these are both just fixed readers that are configured and I'm actually going, uh, going to be moving the uh, assets around as they're scanned by the, the environment. So what you see on the screen here is actually Clearstream pre-configured with the two readers. So I have the FIG again MRU102 as well as the MR102 readers configured within the same application. So again, it's, it's utilizing the two technologies and reading those into a database. Uh, I also have a pre-configured database with just two things here for the demo today. So I have an item status kind of report that's showing you these high value assets as they're moving in and out of a stock room. And when I pass the assets, pass the two antennas on the UHF reader, you're gonna see that the items are checked in or checked out. And again, it's all a passive technology. So I'm just walking through. I'm not actually explicitly taking the assets and doing anything with them, like scanning a barcode or um, you know, capturing this information manually. There's no user intervention. It's just capturing it as I walk past the portal. 
For the document tracking, I have a report set up that's a front desk document report. And basically, it's just a report that I can run when I put a stack of documents that are all HF tagged onto a desktop. And I can see immediately all of those documents that are placed there for maybe a patient's personal records, or even in some cases, you maybe you want to pass documents around uh, during a manufacture of an item or something and want to keep that documentation from workstation to workstation. So another, another type of installation that this may work, and you don't have to worry about, again, the stacking of those tags. Whereas in the sample for the UHF, my uh, demo today, the, I'm just taking a limited number, number of items and walking through the portal back and forth to capture that information. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and start up both of these readers. So in Clearstream, you just, once you have all of your readers and everything configured, you hit start all. And that basically powers up all the readers. They're all actively scanning for tags at this moment. And I can go ahead and show you uh, how this works. So what I'm gonna do is actually take the stack of documents I have here, uh, which are all HF tags, and I'm putting them down on the front desk. And when I do that, you're gonna see in the background, the document tracking reader, this MR102 from FIG, is reading those tags and transferring, transferring them to the database. So if I jump over to my report and just run my report in the database, I can see that I have all of these documents at that location. Now again, these are stacked right on top of each other. So in, if I were to do this with a UHF reader, and Klaus is gonna go into this in great detail, if you were to do that on an UHF reader, it may miss these tags. So you may not get an accurate uh, scan of these documents, but with HF, if I go ahead and take these items back off of the uh, reader and rerun my report, they're gonna clear out. So now those tags are gone. But I can take them again and I'll put them back on top of the desk. I'm gonna run re my report again. And I'm gonna see that I'm getting those tags immediately in this report and uh, they're scanning and getting sent to the database. So I'm getting all of those tags being scanned immediately. If I were to take off some tags, but leave some documents on there, rerun my report, you can see I have one document that I left on the desk there and it's still sitting there, but I'm getting 100% reads of these stacked tags as it's sitting on top of this desk, uh, something that uh, UHF would have trouble with and you would find yourself in this situation trying to move the tags around in order to capture all of that information into the database to, uh, to run this report and get 100% accuracy. Now for the UHF side, Again, this reader is actively reading just as the HF is in the same application. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of tools here, and I'm going to walk past uh, my antennas. Now, again, I have two antennas set up. They're set up one after another, and Clearstream right now is just configured through the drag and drop interface that I'll show you in just one second to go ahead and record the activity of those tags, and it's seeing that it's passing antenna one followed by antenna two, so it knows the movement of that asset or that tag as it's going through the portal and can record that to a database. Now this is a tool room tracking type application, but it could work with pallet tracking if you're doing shipping and receiving type verification. You're getting that uh, recording of the data in the database based on that logic of the scans that are happening out in the field. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some assets. I'm just gonna put them in front of the antennas and walk past the readers. Uh, they're getting scanned by the two antennas. And as you see that, the uh, tags that I just walked through there, the three that I walked by, are now recorded into the checkout. So again, it's a passive application. I'm just walking through the portal, and as I walk through the portal, it's getting picked up by, in this case, the two antennas that I have hooked up to this MR U102 reader, and it is recording it into the database, and now they're back to checked in. So I'm just walking through the portal, and it's passively scanning and collecting that information. Hmm. So that there is a... Howie, can I ask you a question? I hope, sure, hope I don't mind. You know what? I'm just looking at uh, the uh, MR102. You have about 145 tags shown yep. uh, on the document tracking, but we only saw maybe four or six come up into the report. Could you explain that? Sure. So uh, Clearstream gives you a lot of flexibility in how you're scanning tags and recording them to the database. <clears throat> so. Uh, one of the features of Clearstream is actually this uh, tag reporting or tag event uh, feature that allows you to control how often tags are sent to your database. Um, you can also set it so that it records the activity of the tags as they move in and out of the antenna. So what I have configured here is that every five seconds or so, it reports all of the tags that are sitting on this HF scanner here to the database. 
You can also make it so that when you, uh, it's only gonna report the tags if they go away from the antenna and come back. So you have a lot of flexibility in uh, how and when tags are being reported to the database side so that you're not just reporting tags all the time, you're really reporting them based on the activity of the tag. So if I were to take that last tag that was sitting on the demo for the HF reader, I'm gonna walk away from it now. Now we just went to 170. Um, that was actually reporting to the database that the tag is no longer seen. So it's reporting nice. that it's gone. So that's why you saw from that report that the, uh, the medical uh, documents were getting removed from the report because the HF reader was reporting, hey, I don't see this tag anymore. And now as long as I keep the tags away from the reader, you'll see it's gonna stay at 170. If I were to go ahead and take the HF tags, a whole stack of them and bring them back over and put them on that, you're gonna see they go up and they're, they're gonna go up about five at a time here because they are, now I have five tags sitting on top of that HF reader reporting once every, I think, I forgot exactly what I had, but two seconds or five seconds, something like that. Uh, so, good, thank you for that explanation. No problem. A good, good catch there, Mike, just so uh, no one was confused by what was going on there. That was somebody in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good catch to them. Um, okay, so what I thought I'd show you guys next really quickly is this was a pre-configured demo that I had set up just to show you the two different technologies. But I did wanna show you really quickly how easy it is to really configure a FIG uh, fixed RFID reader into a database. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this project for now. I just powered down my readers. And what I wanna do is actually configure something new. So I'm gonna go over to my database and I have a table here called RFID tag list. And right now it's empty. So imagine you guys already have a system in place where you're doing some sort of tracking or some sort of data collection and you want to leverage this fixed RFID into that system. You could typically build a table for that to collect that data or just leverage something you already have in that system for collecting the data. So I have right here an RFID tag list. So you can imagine again, it's something that you already have in place and you want to use this as the point where you're sending your tags. So I'm going to go over to Clearstream. I'm going to start up a new project. Really quickly, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, add my process here. Now, the process for Clearstream is you have a source of your data and a destination of your data. The source is always fixed RFID, and the destination will be where you wanna send that tag information. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that RFID tag list table here, and then refresh my mappings at the bottom. So I have a source of RFID. I have a destination of the RFID tag list, which again is that database table where I'm gonna send the tags that are collected by the reader. The last thing I really need to do is just add a reader to my configuration. So I'm gonna click this readers button. I'm gonna go ahead and select add and select FIG. And the one thing I need to do in order to start scanning RFID tags into that database is enter the IP address or host name of the reader. Now all of the readers that we support are, uh, are supported by a, an ethernet communication. So they're just plugged into your network. Now, if you don't know the IP address, we try to make it as easy as possible. You can click this find button and it's gonna search the network for all of your five readers. But I'm just gonna go ahead and I know the IP address. I'm gonna reuse one of the ones I did uh, and enter that here. So I have a reader now configured in my environment. Let's just give it a real quick name. Let's just call it warehouse, uh, let's do stock room one. Okay, so I've added one reader to my environment and I'm gonna leave everything else here as default. Close this, I'm going to save my project. And I'm gonna start this reader up. So I'm just gonna put that in the started state and now I'm gonna take some tags just as I did before. I'm gonna take in this case UHF tags and we're gonna go over to the uh, RFID reader. I'm gonna place them in front of the antennas and you can see it's scanning tags and sending them to the destination. So right there, I just put a couple of tags over my FIG MRU 102 reader. It says I sent 26 tags to the destination. If I were to go back over to my uh, large system I already have in place for asset tracking or whatever it may be, I'll hit F5 here, and you can see that I have 26 tags that were just scanned from a fixed RFID reader and sent into the destination. Uh, so it's really that easy to get up and running and then Clearstream gives you the flexibility to control how and when these tags are reported to the database. This is the most basic state, but it would give you guys some uh, ability to see the performance of RF, RFID, how it uh, scans tags, and then utilize maybe a system you already have for actually 
collecting that data uh, that's being reported by the readers. So I think that's kind of everything I wanted to show you guys today, just to get up and running with Clearstream. It was a pretty high level overview of uh, everything. I have a question for you, Howie. Sure. Uh, you know, you're the, you're the lead developer of this product. Uh, you make it look so easy. You know, what about the average person or an IT person just getting started with RFID or Clearstream? Would they be able to set this up uh, a similar demo just as easily as you did? Uh, sure. Well, after this webinar, definitely. <laughs> but uh, yes, I obviously I've you know I've used Clearstream quite a bit. Uh, we try to make it as simple as possible to get started with fixed RFID. Um, so from the setup that I just showed you here, it's very easy to attach a fixed RFID reader to a database and start scanning tags. The thing with the software is it gives you a lot of flexibility to match your processes. So you'd want to learn the software, uh, take a look at the, um, the configurations that you can do with Clearstream, and then also test the performance and you know, really research what technology, either HF or UHF, are going to suit what you're trying to do. Like uh, what I've mentioned here today, the, you know, the HF tags can be read in a packed environment. Uh, so they they suit a, a specific purpose. UHF fits a different type of purpose for the different data collection process that you need. So just getting started with RFID, you want to you want to take a look at the different features of the software, make sure it's going to handle everything that you're trying to do with your processes, but also take a look at the technology of the RFID to see which type will work best for what you're trying to set up, and that sometimes can be testing. Uh, for just the technology and, and utilizing FIG and Clearstream, you can really start to see the differences between the two different technologies very, very quickly. So you're able to make a better judgment as to which will suit you better uh, because you can get up and running quickly without, you know, custom programming or anything like that. It's all, it's even just a free trial if you'd like to, to download the software and see how it works. Um, so I hope that uh, answers your question. <laughs> It, it did. I'm just wondering now too, are there any differences at all uh, between configuration of a FIG HF and UHF reader when you're using Clearstream? Uh, no, and that's a great question. So the greatest thing about these uh, integrating these FIG readers into Clearstream is that the, uh, like Brad mentioned earlier, the API is the same. So the communication between the readers is the same from Clearstream, but that also gave us the ability in Clearstream to allow a user to configure an HF reader in the exact same way that they configure a UHF reader. Um, so what's cool about that is you can use Clearstream to run both readers in the same environment. And so imagine it's something like a, you know, a, a hospital where you're doing these, this document tracking, you can use HF readers for collecting the information from the documents that are packed tightly, but then say you wanna do badge scanning into some secure area uh, where you want to keep track of people going in and out of some some area of a hospital. Mm -hmm. You can use the software to integrate both of those technologies into the same system. So you don't have to go out and take a look at, uh, you know, HF and a big system for the document tracking side, and then UHF and a big system for the badge scanning side. It's a single integrated solution for capturing that information. And uh, from the technology standpoint, the configuration is identical. Okay, hey, Howie, it's Brad. I'm going to jump in for a second because I see a great question here. And it's it, the question is, can you just, you're showing us injecting records um, as they see it um, from the outsider looking in for the first time. Can you explain how you actually update a record or modify a record's status like you did with the check-in, check-out really quickly in the UI and then okay. leave you alone? <laughs> That's no problem at all. So let me uh, just talk slightly more about the configuration here. So. Uh, to start with on that side, the default of Clearstream is always to append a record to a database. So kind of like what you said there, it sort of is injecting a new record into the destination you have selected. So every time a reader scans a tag, it's, it's sending that tag to the database and collecting it as like a transactional record of what just happened. Um, <clears throat> you can also control that. You can control how and when tags are written to the destination. One option you actually have is update existing append if not found, which is just um, a way of updating the records in the database with the most recent information. So if you have multiple readers throughout a facility and you're reading these, docu these documents or whatever it may be, you're updating the record in the database with the last uh, status of that tag. So if you didn't want a transactional history of the items, you um, 
you can update the record in the database so you have one instance of that tag and you just know the last place it was scanned. Uh, also on top of that, because you mentioned the demo, uh, Clearstream gives you the ability to, uh, to change how you're reporting tags to the database. I touched on this really quickly before, but it allows you to uh, report to the database when a tag is scanned. So that's what this tag report tag visible is. You can also do something called report tag no longer visible. So that would allow you to report a tag to the database when it's no longer being seen by the reader. You can also do something like um, report tag again only after not visible, which means the tag, if you report the tag from the reader to the database, um, don't tell me about it again until it goes away from this reader and comes back. So you're reporting on, you're, you're telling it that I only want to know about this tag at certain, when certain things happen to it in the fixed reader environment. Uh, lastly, you can turn all of these off and you can do custom events, <clears throat> which allows you to do things like the check in, check out. You're, you're defining uh, steps of when, what happened, what a tag has to do in order to, for it to report to the database. And really quickly, all that means is it has to go past antenna one, then antenna two before it's reported to the database as an event. So you have a lot of control over. Um, how and when tags are being reported to the database and updated to the database. But that goes back to Mike's question about, you know, you, there's a lot more you can do than. Uh, uh, last question, of, Howie. Sure. Last question I have is, uh, what about those users that, uh, current users of Clearstream? You know, can they now upgrade to 4.1 and intermix a five reader into their current system? Yep, so if, you, if they go ahead and download the latest version from our, our website, uh, they can go ahead, uh, upgrade the software. It's just gonna upgrade in place and it's gonna give them the ability then to integrate both HF and UHF readers into their environment through FIG, of course. Um, and they can go ahead and whatever configuration they already have will still work. They can add on to it now with this technology. So if they see a new instance of how they wanna leverage RFID, they can just build on that with the latest version. So, wonderful. Let, let's pull Klaus into this now. Uh, if you can, uh, I guess, come back over to our uh, presentation. Sure thing. Uh, you know what, uh, if you could uh, just advance the slides for us. We're still having a yeah. trouble over on our end. Thank you so much. And uh, let me just give you an introduction, Klaus. Klaus, some of the people attending automatic understood they didn't sound like you okay. <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> so I assure everybody yes. this is the real Klaus Schoke. I know yes. a lot of times he's uh, never to be found in this office, just flying around the country. Uh, but we are fortunate to have you here. And uh, if you could give us a, just a little bit about all these frequencies and the differences between uh, HF, UHF, why one is used over the other. Yes, uh, thanks, Mike. So uh, the guy comes with a heavy southern accent here. Um, okay, we are talking a little bit, a little bit about technology and RFID. And uh, my main message, or my my really important message, is um, if you are searching the internet with with the keyword RFID and so on, you are maybe ending up on on a lot of websites and information and white papers talking about RFID. But if you are looking then a little bit closer. So they are talking only about one specific passive RFID about UHF. And RFID is definitely not only UHF. RFID is low frequency, high frequency, and ultra high frequency. And that has a good, good reason. Um, and one is not better as the other. That's true, but it's not true depending on the application you are trying to do. Certain applications will definitely work better in one or the other frequency executed, and for some applications, it makes not, not a big difference. So um, here just a few pictures from the left to the right. So you see electronic passports have an alpha D chip. You have contactless payment today, either way with cards or Apple Pay or Google Pay. You have transit, uh, you have events with tickets, you have access and loyalty and you have asset tracking and you and if you are seeing just this applications you see like like if you are looking the more you are looking to the left side you can re, you will realize there is more security required 
we are looking more on the right side, this is, um, yes, more asset tracking and so on in an area like a barcode. So you want to do something, you want to collect data, but you are not looking for high security features. So therefore, depending on the application, you will have different kind of readers and different kind of security levels. Okay, next, please. Next slide. Yeah. Um, a little overview about the frequencies uh, means um, the, the black and craig part in the background is a complete frequency band in the world. And in green, you see there's by uh, at 100 to 135 kilohertz is the low frequency RFID area. The blue 13.56 megahertz is high frequency, and that is worldwide um, the same frequency. And you find even the word NFC. So near field communication, that is part of 13.56 uh, megahertz. And then uh, the couple of red bars, so UHF depends where you are in the world, is somewhere between 867 and 915 megahertz. And active RFID is uh, typically at 2.45 gigahertz. We will concentrate a little bit more on, on HF and UHF passive. Uh, low frequencies also is not too much um, um, standardized, so there are not really ISO standards in place, and the same is true for um, active RFID. So there you have a lot of proprietary system outs, and you cannot interchange tags and readers and that kind of information. HF and UHF is to 99% really regulated by, by ISO standards, so you have a very good interoperability between tags and readers. One important part on this slide is the line in the middle. And you see on the left side is written reading distance is around about one meter for HF and low frequency, not more. And here the energy transfer between a reader and your antenna or your antenna and the uh, tag, your transponder is done by an inductive coupling. That means a magnetic field is an energy transfer. On the right side for UHF, you see there is written backscatter. Uh, backscatter coupling. So that's an electrical field that reaches much, much further, but has some problems with um, reflections and absorption by, by density materials and so on, but we'll talk about that. Next slide. So which uh, RFID technologies are available? Okay, next. Um, if you are just reading from the bottom up, so we're talking about RF technologies. You have an RF label that EAS is electronic article surveillance. You find that little plastic white thing on a lot of merchandise in a store. One bit information, it's on or off, nothing else. Then you have uh, read only transponders. So you can read like a barcode only an information from it, but you cannot write anything to it. That is quite often still used in low frequency. Um, then you have anti-collision. Anti-collision is that means you can have more than one transponder in your antenna field because the anti-collision procedure is an algorithm and a strategy that the transponders are not all answer, answering at the same time. So you would understand nothing like a phone call. So the, the, the sequence is, is determined in how the communication runs. Then you have read-write transponders. So with memories, you can read, write data to it. Then you have for security applications encryption available. So these kind of transponders are not the until that kind of black thing read wide, read write, that are typically um, um, contactless memory transponders. Now we are talking about transponders with, with a processor running, yes, um, for encryption purposes or for sensors where you have a temperature moisture sensor and any kind of sensors and also act, uh, actuators for alarm and temperature control application. Yes, Mike. Klaus, I have a question. D does the FIG product line support all of those transponder technologies? Um, not the RF label, not the EIS, but everything else is in somewhere in our frequency band. So I talked about the read only is, is uh, mostly um, um, low frequency and all other technologies are fully supported. And even the top two, which are very, very um, custom specific, if you have sensors or actuators, we have a very special function in our readers. So that means the air protocol is, is uh, um, specified by an ISO standard, 
but the proprietary commands to, to get the sensor data and so on, our readers have, we are calling it a transparent command mode, a very special mode, very easy to use. But in this way, the firmware must not be rewritten for any kind of a new transponder or a specific transponder which comes to the market. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, please. So just to give you a few um, data, I will not read everything, just an idea. These are UHF transponders. Um, you see a couple of pictures on the left side. Now, so um, remember, it's that backscatter technology, reading distance, you have up to that 10 meters or even more. Uh, so 30 feet, even more is 30 feet. Um, you can read typically between 100 and 500 transponders per second, so pretty fast, theoretically up to 1,000. And um, you have different memory sizes uh, for these kind of, of uh, technology available. And you see on the right side a little list of applications, typical applications, unit case management, manufacturing, logistics, um, container, laundry, retail. Okay, next one, HF. So an HF transponder you see very typically on the left side, it's very easy to recognize with a, with a loop antenna. Yeah? So there is an antenna loop maybe with three, four, five turns. Because why do we have a loop? we have inductive coupling. So we, we have a magnetic field which couples into the loop to provide the energy for the um, memory or for the um, a chip or processor on the car. Reading distances are up to 1.5 meters or so five feet. That's absolutely the maximum. You have a couple of different ISO standards. Depending what ISO standard you have, you can read about 60 to 200 IDs per second, or even with one standard, um, up to 1,200 IDs per second. You get a lot of uh, different memory sizes. And what are the typical applications? Yes, item management, manufacturing, logistics, and so on and so on. You see, there's a couple of applications mentioned, which was already in the UHF listing. But on the bottom, you see then ticketing, public transport, access control, for example. These are higher security applications, which are typically not be, not be able to do successfully or with a high security level in low frequency and even not in, high, uh, in ultra high frequency. Okay, and the next one. So a little bit about low frequency. Um, you see, if you can see the transponder, um, the internal part, like on the top or in the middle, you see a very, very uh, often winded antenna in, in copper wire because of the frequency. Reading distance here is also like an HF up to one meter in that area. You have read-write and read-only transponders. You have pretty small memories on, on this kind of transponders. And uh, the typical application are animal, animal identification, car immobilizers, and some industrial applications like parking um, or something like that. Okay, next one. So some opportunities and limitations. Okay. Yep, next one is good. Uh, okay, the next one. Oh, pressed on. Yeah, um, pressed uh, that we see the complete thing. This is, this is really the important part which you should consider as physics, which you nobody can bend if you are thinking about an application. The black part um, there shows like the um, um, view of the RFID HF antenna. And the green part, you see a symmetrical reading area around your antenna, uh, because that magnetic field is formed around your antenna. And that is the energy field where you can read a transponder. So um, press again that we see the right part. So if we are now looking to an antenna in a UHF application, here you see a direction. So you have not a symmetrical field around your antenna, you have a direction field depending on antenna uh, characteristics. So you have a beam angle and, and some other parameters, how the energy is leaving your antenna. But here you see something at the end where with the arrows, there's a reading area gray, and then there are a couple of reading holes, and then are coming some little islands with reading areas again. Why, what is that? And that I'll try to explain very shortly on the next uh, slide. Um, the top left picture shows a UHF antenna mounted, let's say, on a very high pole, high above ground. 
And then if you would measure the energy density in the emitted field, then you see the white is the highest energy and light gray and so on. So you see even a very symmetrical field going out, out of your antenna. The right top picture would show if you are looking directly towards the antenna, yes, a very symmet uh, symmetrical field. But who is using an antenna maybe on a 30 or 40 high pole? Nobody can use it. So you have to mount it in whatever, five feet or less um, in your warehouse, in your office or wherever the application is asking. And suddenly the two pictures are ch changing to the two bottom pictures. Yes? Because with all kind of metal rebar um, in the ground, in the environment, uh, it, or even very high density material, are reflecting that kind of uh, energy beam out coming out of the antenna. And then you are getting that kind like, like the fingers on the left picture, and you see where the gray is, you still read, but if your tag moves up and down, then you are getting from a read to a no read to a read to a no read area and so on and so on. And you cannot calculate this. This is this picture, if you would move the, move the antenna, I think even by half a foot, it will look completely different again. So how do you overcome it? You overcome it. The only way to do it, and you see, therefore, um, and even Howie was nicely showing, he was working with two antennas. And a lot of readers can connect four antennas, or we can even connect more antennas by using something like a multiplexer between it. So you have to mount multiple antennas in the area in different kind of positions, in different kind of angles, so that one antenna is, is covering the whole reading holes of the other antenna. Oh, so that's the only way to do it. Thank okay, you. Okay, next. This is also very, very important to consider for an application. How should I do my application? So the top line shows you, I mean, on the top, you see the frequencies, again, from low frequency to UHF on the right side. The first line shows tags close to each other. Yes, depending on the frequency, you are getting there more or less um, influence. In HF, we have there a special technology in the meantime, um, which is even overcoming that kind of problem, having um, close uh, tags in very close proximity to each other. The bottom thing is more important to remember. So there's polymer, so plastic, glass, water. So from a low density material to a high density material. You see on a low frequency, there's no influence. It stays completely green with a little bit of yellow on the bottom. In HF, there's also very low, uh, low influence. So you can read, therefore, an alpha D tag through a human body without any problem. Yes, and then on UHF, there's high influence. So higher density materials like water, water, for example, is even reflecting, but mainly absorbing the energy. So if you have any kind of a, um, item like a body between your antenna and an UHF tag, you will not read it anymore. Okay, next. And here very short without details and you can discuss it just to show a little, little uh, few typical applications, pallet tracking at dog doors. You cannot do that in HF because you're not getting the read range you need. In UHF, it works perfectly. Yes, document tracking. Yes, in HF, in one ISO standard works perfectly. In UHF, it will not work at all. Smart shelf applications, almost the same, means you have a little bit more effort to do it correctly. In UHF, that's easier to do in HF. Road tolling will not work in H HF. You're not getting the read distance and so on. I don't, I don't, and you can list, make that list as long as you want, and you'll find a lot of applications which will work better or not in one or the other application uh, frequency. Okay, next one. Here we did a very short video um, to show you, we started, we have an HF antenna in that table. And we have for the document application, so I just use playing cards. So a deck of poker cards and 52 cards, and each of these cards has an HF transponder embedded in the card. You see now the density, the stacking of that kind of transponder is extremely high, so that is always represents one page of paper. Uh, and if I'm putting now the, the 52 cards on the table, 
Now you see in the background, we are reading them already a little bit in the window. It is already populated, but they are coming now on the table. And you see instantly a 52 recorded, 50 tags uh, in field is that showing. The top line, you see it now. So securely all 52 cards absolutely um, um, read. The next one, we're doing now the same thing with UHF, for example. So again, we are having a UHF antenna there sitting on the table. And we have a deck of cards again. And all 52 cards are, are also tagged with a UHF transponder. And if I'm putting some transponders now on, on the antenna, you see like the one after the other, each one which I'm putting on there is also very, very securely recognized and put in the database. Now we are putting them back and putting now the stack together, like a stack of documents or playing cards. And what do you see? Nothing. Yes. Now it means in this moment, technically what happens, all antennas are detuning from that kind of transponders. So therefore the reader has even zero communication. If I'm starting spreading them out again, they are coming back into life and I can read them. Okay. Next one is the last one. So um, thank you. I wanted to keep it short, not, not to bother you too much with, with boring stuff. Um, everybody has our address. So if you have technical questions, contact us. And, and uh, like Mike said, we are offering a toolkit. Yes. And uh, if a toolkit has only a hammer, like one frequency, and if you have a hammer and you, you maybe think everything looks like a nail. Yes, and I think definitely that's not true. So choose wisely, choose the right frequency. And you see with, uh, with Clearstream, you don't have to worry. You can connect whatever you need. You can connect for your warehouse, uh, the UHF reader, and maybe for the document tracking or other kind of applications in HF reader. The Clearstream software will handle it in the same way. So you can set it up so easily and you don't have to worry about. Don't worry about. Think about what frequency to use to make an application happen, and that you are getting at the end your 99.9% .9 read rate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Klaus. Um, you know what? If, if I'd have to summarize in how to make RFID easy, after listening to the three of you panelists, I'm thinking that flexibility in the type of equipment that you have to select the correct frequency for the application. And then a tool such as Clearstream that made it so easy to take advantage of these data streams to put it into any type of database format that you need. Um, that's clear to me that uh, that makes uh, RFID easy. I notice we do have a few questions and I'll take, uh, I know we're running a little bit late, but allow me to at least ask some of these questions of the panelists. Uh, we had one uh, question, uh, and I think you answered that about that updating. It was answered, yes. Yeah. That one is interesting, yes. I have a question here. That, uh, the attendee has a uh, parts bin of approximately uh, four foot by four foot that they have 100 automotive headrests in. Uh, sometimes it takes a while to uh, uh, get the uh, current uh, HF, UHF. Uh, HF wouldn't have read the range for that particular application over a four by four foot area. Um, that depends a little bit on, on the uh, transponder size, which are on the parts and uh, what kind of antenna mounting. So if, if, you are, if you can keep your parts and antennas, let's say in, in a distance from less than three feet, then I don't see a problem that uh, HF will work in that application very, very well. Uh, but most likely, but if UHF is not working, I would almost guess something is not set up correctly, either way, antenna placement or, or the um, transponder choice on the items. Okay. Uh, this one might be for Howie. Howie, uh, they asked the question, I need to do lot tracing, uh, which is uh, following a raw material through a multiple processes. Uh, is it possible to write to tag? and do a lot traceability with this particular software of Clearstream? Um, not currently with Clearstream, at least from the writing <clears throat> perspective. It can read all the memory banks on the tag. So if you were to write something to a tag via like an RFID printer, so if you were to print these lot labels to uh, 
via an RFID printer, Clearstream could read to it, but currently it's only a reading application where it's pulling those memory banks into a database. Um, so to write to them, you would need something like an RFID printer and some printing software, or uh, we also support that on the Tracer Plus side with the mobile scanners to write to tags uh, using the graphic graphical interface on, an, on a mobile uh, device. Okay. Uh, another question, this one looks more toward you, Klaus. Uh, are FIG readers a complete handheld device, or are they a reader antenna built into other devices such as Honeywell? Um, no, we have not like something like Honeywell or a lot of these handheld reader devices. Um, the, the reason is you you find I I would say 20 plus manufacturers of these kind of devices on the market, and we don't want to be number 21, and uh, we want to be always a little bit more innovative and offering solutions. Um, which are working better. And, and um, Brad and Howie already even said, hey, customers do not want to use a handheld device to run around to make the task because that will, they are forgetting it. They are using the handheld device in their own way. And therefore, we are not very convinced about these kind of devices. Hmm. I, I would say that though, that uh, FIG is a manufacturer of OEM devices, board level, Yes. readers, board level antenna, tuning boards and circuits that can be used uh, to be built into RFID enabled and are often built into RFID enabled products. Uh, a question on Clearstream. Can we use Clearstream software for reader other than FIG? I think that was answered. I think that was uh, the answer was yes. You can intermix uh, uh, platforms and uh, select maybe the best hardware uh, for a particular application and Clearstream accepts them all. And can Howie show us selecting antennas through a multiplexer or multi-level of multiplexers? Has the multiplexer support been in implemented in version 4.1, Howie? Mm, I don't think so at the moment. No, because we, we uh, Clearstream and we um, focused on to get um, the devices in and, and that we have all functionalities out of the standard devices and for that kind of a little higher level so that you can have um, multi, multiple levels of multiplexers so and even uh, theoretically hundreds of antennas on one reader that is not done in this moment. It's something that we would certainly want to work with you, Howie, on yes. in, uh, in a future release. Yeah, if um, uh, the person who asked the question would want to reach out after the webinar and talk about the application and how they'd like to use that, that would be, we'd be more yeah. than willing to uh, to have that conversation. So, uh, uh, how about this one? Do five readers fit into Jameson RFID portals, easy to deploy, uh, and into those enclosures themselves? Certainly, the the devices could there be is, inside. There's definitely no no problem because. Um, to put their devices in, in um, so in the Jameson uh, portals and having then a nice and easy to use Clearstream software behind it. And the, can you imagine how easy an integration uh, would be? So having a nice uh, solution with a portal, so having that reader and the Clearstream software and the customer has uh, with really a very, very low effort immediately the data which are coming in from that dock doors or something like that into their database. Unbelievable work. <laughs> yeah. uh, is the uh, FIG reader and Clearstream software only compatible with the Ethernet interface on the readers or can it be interfaced with USB? Yeah, this is actually something I believe we talked about before the webinar. Um, this is something that we do want to support. It's not currently, and we only support the Ethernet interface on the uh, FIG readers. Um, that decision was really driven around the fact that that's how Clearstream typically works with multiple readers uh, connecting to a single instance of the Clearstream software. Uh, but that is something that we want to look into the uh, for the future um, okay. for the next yes. release. Clearstream. Well, I mean, it's like, yeah, for everybody who's listening, Stan, exactly. I mean, it's like we did that um, integration so that you have access to 100 readers now and you have access to whatever, 98% of all functions of the readers. But um, yes, we will do other interfaces. We do other levels like we discussed the multiplexers. Yes, we will keep um, Clearstream busy and we will make you guys happy to deliver what you are looking for. Wonderful. All right. 
I, I wish to thank everyone. I know that we ran over by about 15 minutes on the, uh, the webinar. Uh, thanks for uh, continuing to stay with us. And we look forward to the next releases on the uh, Clearstream as yeah. well. Thanks, everybody. And uh, contact us for any questions, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening, day, and whatever it may be where you're, you're from. Thanks again. Thank you.